Greetings fans, hyperfans and people just lost looking for videos of cats on YouTube. The latest series of Lego minifigures has come out a little while ago. Um, so... I have actually gone out and picked up a full case. So let's start by getting this guy opened up. Now, the other thing that I've picked up recently, apart from a full case of Lego figures, is a little mini scale set. Um, these things were the bane of gate shops when Pokemon cards first came out. Here, it's a little bit more complicated because a lot of the different figures weigh the same, but you can kind of work out what's what, and it means that you know what you're supposed to be feeling for. Let's actually go through and pull some figures out. That box contained at least three of every single figure, usually in pairs. Um, I will put the actual breakdown of where they were and how much they weighed here. Obviously that is going to vary, I think, from box to box. So let's just go through the series. And we'll start with the fact that the most sought after figure from each of these tends to be the person in suit figure. Um, I know that the Godzilla suit, the chicken suit, even the bee suit have been going for quite silly money. And in this series we actually get two um, suited figures. We've got the banana guy which I know that a lot of people are going to be um, hunting for. And we also have uh, the Penguin Kid has the ice skates. Um, so actually, let's do Penguin Kid first. Uh, One-sided print on the head. It's got the same arms as the shark suit short legs with the twos printed on. Uh, obviously, a new piece for the penguin head. But, yeah, it's a very cute little one, but for some reason it just kind of falls short for me. Um, that's not just about the length of the legs. Banana Guy, um, actually again, not super impressed with. He has got um, a plain chest, plain legs, the part coloured arms, which are kind of cool, um, a one-sided face. And then the banana suit, which, because it's the same yellow as the face, you don't really get much of an impact with the face looking through. It just looks like banana with a face. But, yeah, I, I think that is going to be one of the ones that people are hunting for. Um, and I'm sure that when they're being sold singly, someone will want to pick up a bunch. The other one that people seem to be super excited about was the babysitter. Um, the babysitter herself is kind of bland. Again, plain legs, um, a nice sort of pug in glasses sweatshirt um, by painted arms. It's the Harley Quinn hairpiece again. Um, again, nothing. She, I don't even think there's a couple of these that have got. Um, back prints to the face. I will show those, but it's this. It's the um, baby Lego figure that everybody seems to be super excited about. Um, it's two pieces. Everything is sort of molded and painted on the body, and then the head just sort of pegs on to that post. It's just scaled down. It's uh, the three millimeter ports as opposed to the five mil on the rest of the figures. 
The baby bottle um, we've seen in Shrens before. But yeah, I mean, the baby's kind of cute. If you're into that kind of thing. Uh, but it's kind of those real world figures which I'm not personally too keen on. Um, for example, you've got the dog show guy. Um, nice little white Scotty. Um, he's got a nice super shiny tie and number one on the rosette. That's both in a silver metallic. Nice dog bone in the pocket. No back printing. So again, it's kind of um, quite a plain figure. The trophy does have the silver dog printed on it, but again it kind of leaves me a little bit cold. Things start to get a little bit better with the Hiker. Um, now this guy's got some really nice paint applications. Um, the face is really expressive, again no back print, the hair is kind of cool. I think we've seen this um, quite a lot recently, I think that was even on the Kid with the teddy bear? Um, I don't know, but it really does suit the figure. He's got some nice reflective zippers on his top. Uh, the legs are bicolored, shunt printed, actually, even on the belt piece itself. Comes with two accessories for his hands um, the Grebel Trail. And a compass printed onto a clear piece. That's all rather cool. And then the backpack, which... It's a little bit outside of LEGO's normal style, but it really does suit. Um, gives it just about enough clearance with the sleeping bag up there. And that's really a little bit more fun. Um, as indeed is... The Polar Explorer. Um, now that's a better penguin than the Penguin Kid. Um, he's got a port on his back, so I guess you can, um, I don't know, plug the camera onto it or something. Um, this figure does have a back print to the face, and if I just take the mask off, you can see that she's winking. So... I like the fact that it is a female in a science setting. Um, the colours are really nice. Um, you've got bicoloured legs, bicoloured arms, and uh, front and back printing on the top. So that's actually a really nice figure, really nicely detailed. Um, and see, not only have you got two suited characters in the set, you've got two pet characters in the set as well. So they obviously have been listening to what people have been collecting. So continuing on with the real world but a little bit more fun figures, you have the female boxer. Um, now this one was actually pretty difficult for me to find. Um, made more difficult by the fact that I'd started to do this thing with the weights and on the box, all you ever see is um, her from the front there. So she actually comes in quite heavy for that because she has an extra display piece and um, a head guard, which takes up to about 12 grams, I think, or 1.2 grams, no, 12 grams. So if you are actually looking for this piece by bag feeling, um, there's her from the back. The hair piece actually does have this very distinctive, um, almost fishtailed end to it, which is probably the easiest thing to feel for. And if in doubt, find the body piece and feel for the boxing gloves. She's, again, that's a really nice figure. Um, 
bicolored legs, but she's also got side printing, front printing, waist printing, um, really nice front piece printed there. Um, again, she's only, I know she has got a slightly more aggressive back print to the face. Actually, I like that one a bit more, so let's put her to the front. And the fact that you can, for safety's sake, give her the boxing helmet. It's just a really nice figure. Um, actually being able to have all those sort of variations just in that one figure, it kind of shows me all that additional detail that paying £2.50 for a single Lego figure really does allow them to do. The Mariachi is again a really fun figure, uh, comes with a acoustic guitar um, and a moustache. The moustache is actually separate and you can put the moustache onto other characters. <laughs> So yeah, the hat is really cool, the decoration on the legs, um, the chest, it all kind of unifies together. Um, only problem with him is you kind of need to buy three of them and sort of have your own little mariachi band. Um, I know they did a figure with maracas at the beginning of these series, so yeah, uh, looks like you're going to have to be hitting eBay if you want to go for the full band. The other two real world characters is we do have the Spooky Boy, um, complete with Spooky Tales book. Uh, it's the opening one, nothing in there, but it helps it sound a little bit better. He has his pet tarantula, which is, again, it's just the standard spider that we've seen a hundred times before. But he makes such a nice companion piece to the spooky girl figure that came out a couple of series ago. He's got the emo fringe, he's got just this tiny little fang sticking out the side of his mouth. Um, very baleful expression. Uh, full printed arms. Great little um, Lego skull t-shirt. And a metallic printed chain studded belt and he's got the big boots on with lacing details so yeah i i really do like him but then again i'm a sad old goth so something like that's always gonna appeal to me and the other even slightly halloweeny one because we have got that coming up is we have another trick-or-treater last year we had the full monster set and it included a kid in a skeleton outfit this time we have somebody in a devil outfit. He's got a far more charming expression. Um, he has the short legs, so this is definitely the little brother. You can tell because he just looks more irritating. He has the same pumpkin lantern, um, trick-or-treat candy bag. He's got the hard wings, which were used on the gargoyle in the same season. Zipper at the front, and you can see pockets in the suit and yes he even does have the curly little devil tail it's a really cute figure um it's great reuse of some of the parts especially the wings but the helmet um with the devil horns lego please do not reuse this on a daredevil figure okay just no Seriously, just please don't. So, whilst the previous year's trick or treating figure had a lot of sort of lovely callbacks to Lego's classic horror figures, i.e., the skeleton um, and all those sort of construction style decorations, this one is he's just a kid in an outfit. 
So together, they work really well. And if you're a LEGO City collector, I guess that it's kind of cool to pick them up and have them adding maybe like a little bit of Halloweeniness to your normal street display. Um, I have to say, if I had the room, I would probably be displaying these guys with a door built in front of them, bowls of candy ready to hand out. It's, yeah, it, it's very, very time specific. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, LEGO have done a lot of Christmassy stuff, so it's kind of cool they're doing some Halloween things. So finally, we get on to the out and out fantasy figures. And I have to say that probably the best of these is going to be this Ice Queen. Um, from the silver detailing of the chest, the iridescent material in the cloak, um, the use of the clear web shooter pieces from this year's Spider-Man series connected with the sci-fi laser blades which you've got I uh, don't know if I can actually get that to pick up on camera. There is just ever so slightly an iridescence to the plastic, which does sort of really add to that iciness. Um, all with the skin colour. She is fantastic. Um, if you like to put a little bit of jeopardy into your um, castle builds, if you want something that kind of bridges the action and fairy tale stuff. She's fantastic. Um, I just really love the detail in her. I mean, I, I love the cape. I love the two-part cape with these very long, thin cuts. Um, it just sort of streams iciness, especially this translucent blue crown as well. She's pretty damned cool. Um, also in the fantasy realm, we have the Wolf Archer. I'm not sure if that is the official name of them, but you have there a very cool little wolf head brooch. You have the moon on the belt sash. And the printing on him is just fantastic. Um, even though the back is covered by a very bog standard quiver piece, there is printing there. Uh, Bicoloured legs, bicoloured arms, full printing on the legs. And yet he, he just looks like basically the kind of badass that you would want for your Lord of the Rings collection and never really got. But underneath this very Shredder-esque mask, um, he's pretty mundane. Uh, he's got the lamb chops and goatee combo, which is... I'm not even going to say nice, it'll give you some variation if you've got a lineup of archers. But that is a very, very cool figure. You also have a Saracen figure. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed by the sword being just in black plastic, um, no ornamentation, it's a very standard sort of castle piece. He's got some nice metallic print on him, um, the arms have got these nice gold wristbands, um, sash printed onto bicoloured legs, uh, the turban piece is pretty nice, um, I don't think I've actually seen this piece for quite a while. Um, face is cool, but doesn't seem sort of super special. Um, does seem almost though, yeah, I'm gonna say that he's probably the weakest character from this series. Not far followed, I have to say, by the pirate. Um, we've had a lot of pirates. Lego have done a whole series of pirates, um, but you know, this is the slightly more expensive mono figure series. He's got back printing uh, with a little bit of wear and tear around the arms, bicolored legs, 
Um, the printing on there doesn't really match up with between the white and the green, so it doesn't really look that ragged. The biggest thing is obviously the headband and skull cap, which mm. see, I kind of think that a bald Lego figure is that, and he looks pretty cool like that. I mean, the, the face is very piratey. I love the fact that he comes with a little pirate treasure map. Um, X marking the spot. Um, but, you know, it's a standard sword, and if it wasn't for the fact that the map's a little bit cooler than no second accessory, um, I don't think that he would beat the Saracen. Um, so we have two more left. We have the female cyborg. Now she has a new chest armor piece. Um, lots of paint taps on that, which is good because the body under it is completely plain. Um, It's very chunky, looks very cool. The bicoloured face looks very cool, as does the silver in the blue on the hair. Um, that side sort of cog image. I'm not sure how close I can get to that on this camera. No, it's not really showing up. But again, it's a standard Lego face with this bi-coloured It's the standard Lego face with this bi-coloured um, detailing on it. It's a standard pistol that we've seen a hundred times before, but it's quite nice that they've taken the modified one by one round and used it to add a little bit more detail and just break up the blue a little bit. She's kind of cool, very pretty. Um, and again, uh, you can kind of tell I like a little bit of silver paint. Finally, we have Sam Fish. No, um, we have the spy. Um, now this is, again, quite peculiar for a Lego figure. Um, the goggles do clip straight onto the hair. And there's no real way of flipping it up. Nice stern expression. He's got um, his little comm headset there. He's part of the Agents line because he's got that logo there, but he's sporting something that's looking very much like a real-life gun. Um, a black climbing rope, which I believe is a repaint of the one that was released with Wonder Woman. Uh, new backpack, which again, it's sort of very real-world and military and... Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool, and these new goggle pieces, which are very, very, um, splinter cell, um, are, are a very cool piece, but I've not seen sort of this real world, a military style figure from Lego for oh, a very long time. So, as I get my moustache models back into shot. That's been a fly through of the 16 members of series 16, the last Lego minifigure series of 2016, with a little bit of insight in how I go through the bags. If you like the video, please give it the thumbs up. If you didn't, let me know why. That's what the comment section is for. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. And until next time, if you're keeping the mint in package, you're not a toy collector, you're a box collector. Nice!